seventh meeting of the City of Norwood's Financial Planning and Supervision Commission. And um, I'll go ahead and call the roll. Mayor Williams. Here. Council President Lake. Here. Mr. Schwartz. Here. Mr. Shepard. Right here. Mr. Vonderhaar is excused. Ms. Longnecker. Here. And Ms. Snyder. All right, very good. Um, before we go to the approval of the prior meeting's minutes, I would like to introduce uh, someone who's with us from the State of Ohio Attorney General's Office, Mr. Dale Vitale. And he is uh, coming as an additional staff to the commission, and we're happy to have you here and welcome you. Um, we're thinking the next meeting, uh, he's offered to do a presentation for us. Uh, we had uh, an initial presentation at our very first commission meeting, but uh, to go over the uh, open records and sunshine laws, just to refresh our understanding of them. So, yeah. that'd be great. Thank you. Thanks I so have, a, if I may comment, I have attended the, some of the local meetings. Um, each er, Every other year, I think Hamilton County puts on the um, Sunshine Law training, and uh, your staff does a wonderful job of making that happen. So I wanted to just let you know that. Okay. Our next item on the agenda is approval of the prior meeting's minutes. Those have been distributed. Um, are there any changes or corrections, additions, deletions? If not, uh, we have a motion to approve those. Shepard, I'll second. Oh, that's right. I'll second. I'm missing um, all those in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, those are good to go. Um, we have now on our agenda the opportunity for public participation. If there's anyone who'd like to say anything to the commission at this point, um, we welcome your comments. Um, we'd like them to be comments, please, and if uh, you could to limit them to three minutes sure. to what's on the agenda, if you could identify yourself. Tom McCabe, Vice President of the International Association of Firefighters Local 445. I'd address this commission at the last meeting regarding the fiscal recovery plan and its <coughs> inclusion of the budget for manpower at the fire department and your requested information. I have not received that. Um, well, I think that the well, okay. Well, I thought that you had. No, I have not. Okay. We'll take note of that. Very good. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else who'd like to speak? Okay. Uh, let's move to the report of the financial supervisor and have uh, materials, I believe, that have been handed out to you. And I will turn it over to April Davis and Anna Mary Thomas. Okay, in front of you are uh, four attachments, A, B, C, and D, and we're going to go through them in order. The first one is A, and this is a uh, fund balance of each month for each fund, and it uh, highlights which ones are in negative. And attached to that is also the cash position statement that comes from the city. So this is through August, because this is the last month reconciled. Uh, one of the funds that's still negative is the general fund at $1.4 million. And then we had a new one pop up, which is the water department. However, this was a timing issue, uh, not one that I'm, we're concerned about. The payment to the county was due early uh, due to the deadline being over a weekend. So they made a payment early to them. And then there were deposits that still needed to be recorded, which you can see on the reconciliation as well. That fund is already back to positives. Um, we have already checked that and we checked that again today. So any questions on the fund balances? What's a requirement to get the general fund uh, positive, or is there a requirement? Recovery plan. Okay, so that starts 2018, or that just right. Yeah, I think I don't have the whole recovery plan in front of me, but once you're in emergency, yeah, it didn't take them a year to just get into this. So they're not going to fix it in a year. Right. So they have within the five years of recovery plan, they want to see that go positive, and I believe it goes positive, projected in. 
2020. Okay, thank you. Any other questions about the fund balances? Water fund? Yeah, I just uh, that's the I'm one. Sorry. It's a timing one. Yeah. Okay. So they made that payment early, and so it's already positive. Yeah. Now. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Attachment B is the revenues. This is the uh, funds that were negative that we had in the uh, fiscal analysis when they were put in emergency. Uh, right now, with it being the end of August, we would like a target of 66.7 percent or higher. If you look at the general fund right now, we're at 74 percent. Um, on target based upon the recovery plan revenues. Uh, a large part has to do with the municipal income taxes tracking a little higher than anticipated. Uh, and then property taxes, they had received advances in July. Uh, they received the last of this revenue in September, so we'll see the last of that come on next or next time we meet with the commission. Um, since that in total is over target, uh, this is good. Uh, they're tracking with the way that they're supposed to. The other funds, the street one, the stormwater, and the building assessment, those are also above target. Uh, the street and state highway are right where they need to be. They get monthly revenue, so that should be tracking right on target for them, and it is, uh, so we have no concerns about those. And then the other funds we've talked about, we've moved into the general fund, and then the one fund has no more activity, and they're just broken out so you can see all those separately. Is there any questions about the revenues that uh, is being shown here? Uh, expenditures is the C attachment. Uh, I'm going to go over the ones that say exceeds on here, like I did last time. If you have questions about any others, you'll have to let me know. Uh, on the second page, two of nine, you'll see the auditor department uh, is uh, exceeding slightly, and that was because we talked about they had one-time payments earlier in the year, uh, so it's throwing our, our target percentages off against their actual spent. Uh, the treasurer's department, this was also high last time, and it was personnel. When we looked into this uh, in the last month, it was noticed that there was an employee who had moved from the treasurer's office into the water department, and that coding had not changed. And so we're working with the auditor's office to make that adjustment and uh, move that employee's expenditures out of this department into the correct fund. Uh, so by the next commission meeting, you should see that being fixed. Uh, so. It's not really over, it's just because we have a wrong employee in there for a couple months. Uh, the earnings tax department is a little high, not much. Uh, they also just had a, an employee move out recently from water from their department to the water department, and they have not filled that position, so there'll be a slight time where they won't have employee costs that we had originally thought they would. Uh, so this one should come down as well. The Civil Service Department, this is where they pay for and administer the tests that have to happen per their unions and to fill vacant positions or positions that could become vacant uh, per their ruling. So we just had tests that were administered and that's why this is up slightly. Uh, not too concerned about that one either. The building department also had those one-time payments we talked about, so uh, that percentage of exceeds is, is coming down uh, because most of that was done in the front part of the year. Again, police, both police administration, police crime, and then fire, or fire department is uh, exceeds right now. We had that large payment to OPNF that was due, uh, that was made in the first part of the year. That's throwing off the target percentage, or throwing off the uh, percentages spent to date. That will start coming in line, and they are coming down. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Just a um, the uh, police administration department is uh, the overage is growing. Um, I'm just wondering whether, I mean, it's not growing at a huge rate, but the entire story is not that it had an early payment, I think. A big part of it is. That was right. a but, but I will look into it. Okay. Yep. Anything else on that one? Nope. Thanks. What is the Auxiliary Police Department? It is, uh, I don't know how many there are in there, Mayor, you can answer that better. A couple of, two gentlemen who um, assist with things like um, they can write tickets, they can, they run errands, they can take um, 
parking meters, parking meters. You know, come to court, uh, court officers. Uh, there's, there, like I said, there used to be more. There's only two now. And if somebody's in the jail, somebody has to be there, and you can somebody keep an auxiliary there, there as a special police there's, officer. There's small, there, like I said, there's only two of them. Do they do things that are different than the other police? Oh, I mean, yes. Or like that the other police powers. don't do? Oh, nothing, nothing that the police don't do, but the police do more than they do, right? Yeah, they, I mean, like I said, they're auxiliary. They can write parking tickets. They can do it. They don't go out and make arrests. Are they the guys in the gray cars? No, those are just, those are used cars from other places. That's that's what those are. Uh, Bud Rich is, is he, you will see him. He drives a white unmarked it says auxiliary police on it and with just you know not not red and blue lights on it okay. Okay. are they part-time yes well bud is bud's full-time uh robert is part-time um one more thing about police and fire um we talked last time and and it's in the minutes somewhere about a comparative study is there any progress on that can, uh, we want to get that on we want to get to the next item or do you want me to address it i also um um, left a message for um, someone in the auditor's office who enters all of that information into the Ohio Municipal League website. Fortunately, they're on vacation. So oh, I have the Ohio auditors. It's called the Ohio Municipal League. Okay. Um, yeah. And so they um, ask any participating communities to enter information into their database about not only salaries but benefits and things like that. And so Great. you can do a comparative study by population and all of that stuff. So there is one printed out down in the auditor's office for elected officials and um, like administrative personnel so police chief and fire chief and things like that but in order to get an entire um, comparative survey you have to have the codes for our, our Ohio Municipal League mm -hmm. membership in order to get that information and like I said unfortunately the person that I requested that from is on vacation and so Great. I expect that when she comes back we'll get that and we can, I can certainly forward that to Ms. Snyder and we can get that out to everybody. Great. Okay, okay. Uh, on page four of nine, uh, we have the public lands and buildings. Again, that was a one-time payment. We're seeing that come down. Parks and playgrounds is up. Uh, again, we're having our big expenditures uh, and then it'll fall off by the end of the year because they'll be closing some of the parks in the next couple of months. So right now you're going to see that being out of whack because they just made some payments to finish out the summer. Um, dispatchers, this is close to Target. I'm not concerned about that one. The Recreation Department, they just closed their big expenditure, which is the pool. Uh, where make, they made the last payments on the pool expenditures here in the last month or so. Uh, so the, the expenditures should start decreasing and coming back in line for that department. Retirees Health Care, <coughs> we had the large payment up front. Um, we've had a few payments since then. <coughs> We're keeping an eye on that one. Okay, that that's the other large one that is uh, uh, gr where the overage is growing. They just made another payment for that, so yes. Okay, but it's it's they continue the the overage continues to get larger, and so it's either not. It's still in line with the recovery plan. It is over on the target percentage right now, based on months. So eight of twelve months. That's doing a comparison of so what they've actually spent against the recovery plan, which is. I don't think that's on here. Percentage that's been spent to date, 87.4%, based on a targeted percentage of 66.6%. So it's not exceeded over the recovery plan to date. Uh, it is exceeding at the month. Yeah, period. the pace. The pace is, yes. Yeah, so if, it's, it's, if, it's sto if it stopped today, then it would be... So, so on this sheet where we're looking at attachment C, five of nine, the 510, 510,000, that's the recovery plan. Correct. Uh, and the four, the 340 would kind of be a straight line through the year, right? The 340, that's, that's Three. the estimated to date to be spent. Straight line like through the year? 12, so 510. Yes. Is that that's what, that's what they would estimate yeah, that, that would have been spent to date. That's, that's what I'm 
I, I, three, four, I could pull out my. Yeah, that's my yeah. Idea. It's just yeah. straight line. Okay, yeah. and so we're at one hundred six thousand dollars over that. What what I think you said is that it hasn't yet exceeded twelve months recovery plan. Correct. But it sure is on a pace to. Yeah. Potentially. And the. And the Potentially. Okay. No, no, no. It's absolutely on a pace to. Potentially. Two. No, it is. All right, we're mincing words there. If you draw lines, well, this one's no, higher they, than that. They one. don't pay that every month. There's not like it's this not a monthly. In monthly. That's the part that. I, that's why I keep saying potentially. Is because it's not like electricity where they get a monthly bill for that. Okay. And and you can say that okay if we're at eighty some percent, uh, you know I mean we're watching this and it's definitely on the radar. But I don't know what's coming in the next couple of months, which we've kind of talked about before. And it's not always a monthly bill for this. Thank you very does much. That makes sense. Yeah, okay. it does. Um, can I add something to? Yeah, please. We said at the beginning, retirees health care, it's a moving target as far as this one here, not the C9 Trust. But if you look down the next line, the C9 Trust portion, we're coming in, the city's coming in under that. So what can happen is we can allow the city as financial supervisor to move appropriations between those lines. It still doesn't violate the recovery plan. There's still the money's there. It's just moving from basically one pew to the other pew. That is very helpful. We yeah. are, what, 100 and... Hundred and seventy, uh, hundred and seventy-seven. Well, I'm trying to do math here. Thousand uh, dollars under. I calculator for that. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're one hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars or thereabouts yeah. under. It's it's on. a lot easier for the city to target and, and really put a true forecast number to the C9 trust portion as it is the other portion. Yeah. And I'll, that's I'll very, that's very that helpful. more after Anna Mary's done, but we'll talk about that. The, a, the, the point I'm taking away is that the combination of, that's the um, millenni millennial, millennial plan. Millennial, millennium plan. Millennium, millennium plan. Mm -hmm. So the combination of the C9 Trust and the Millennium Plan spending year to date is comfortably less than the estimated spent to date. If you that, that's a great way to put that. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Observation. Uh, so the other question is, um, we talked about an actuarial study last time. Can we get to that next? Thanks. Okay, page six of nine, uh, the outside legal fees department. This is up a little bit. Uh, this is where they're paying for their um, uh, law or legal uh, for the union contracts that are still being negotiated uh, to date. Uh, so we're watching that one, but it's not, <coughs> it's close to target. Uh, the earnings tax incentive refund, this one is kind of, it shows it succeeds, however, they make their payments, then we've talked about, we move the income tax out of here for the incentive payments for the three businesses, Paycor, and I forget the other two off the top of my head, and so we move those to the other funds, so if they hit their incentive target, then they have to make a payment back to those companies, so that money's been moved out. So that's just showing these because I'm and making it match the revenues that I brought back into the general fund. So. I'm sorry, so I get these notes correct. Can you um, repeat that again? So I know that there are three people who get yeah, refunds. Yeah, for IDC just came to me, and I put the other one. So in their agreements that they moved in, they get an incentive. Right, if they I know that. meet a certain requirement, and so they move the amount they think will be paid out into a fund 89, and I move those back into the general fund to show the gross earnings tax and then I have to I have to balance it so I balance the amount out of here too. Does that make sense? Okay. 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 The insurance department, uh, this is a one time payment and this is done, therefore it's gonna show exceeds through until December. But there's no more payments. Uh, the random, random drug testing department is slightly above target, but it's really close. I'm not worried about that one. And then the debt service, they just have an interest payment left on that. They've already made their principal. And the transfers, they've made all their transfers that they're allowed in the recovery plan. None are, uh, there's no more going forward. 
page eight of nine. Uh, most of these funds are below the target amount of being expended. The building assessment is slightly high, but that one, it stays close to this revenue. So if you looked at it right now, the fund balance is positive and the revenues are, slight, are close to matching the expenditures, which is what it needs to do. And then page nine of nine just shows you the other funds that have been moved out and then the one that does not have any activity anymore. Any other questions on the expenditures? Which fund is the current employee's health care cost in? It's mostly out of the general fund, but there is some out of the water department too because it flows with where the personnel expenditures are. So they're in each department. Within the general fund? Probably over 90% of it's the general fund. You have some in the street fund, you have some in the state highway fund, you have some in the water department as well which isn't shown here. Does it make sense to isolate that into a separate fund? Okay. No, it doesn't? We can't. We have to keep that with the personnel expenses by okay. department. I think it would provide nice transparency and clarity on the amount of costs associated with that if that was shown separately. But I guess it's what you think is best. That's really by high advice code, but that's got to be... The, the city's required to budget by function. So, like, police, security persons and property, and then by department, be police, fire, fire whatever. And then it's got to be further down, personal services, and then other. So they can't set up a fund that just is to pay insurance costs. Um, now, if you wanted information as far as, I would have to talk to the city auditor as far as what type of reports they could run and provide to the commission members and, if, and the treasurer's office of what they could provide to, to show you that. But as far as the recovery plan, the recovery plan is in the required format and it okay. can't be separated. It, it, we can't have the city separated out as a separate line. But the retirees, you do. The retirees, we do. It's considered a non-departmental. Okay, yeah. it would be nice to get some more information from the auditor or the treasurer on on the current plan costs. Okay, well, I would suggest exactly whatever it is you want, email uh, Ms. Snyder, and then she'll forward that request. Thank you. Anything else on expenditures? Yeah. Last one is attached with D is the reconciliation, which it lists all the bank statements and their balances, uh, the positives and transits, outstanding checks. There were some things that haven't been posted due to timing, which is outlined, and uh, we're still working with the treasurer's department to find out the uh, reconciling items. Uh, we did talk about this, and they have um, changed and, and looking further into some of these items when we had our department meeting with them. Any questions over these reports? Uh, I just want to confirm. I think you said that the, the funding, the cash flows are fluid between the C9 and the Millennium, meaning we can push the money wherever it's needed. Yes, we could, uh, as financial supervisor, if we see that the retirees' health care line is running out of some money in the appropriation line and the C9 Trust appropriation has some money, we can allow the city to take the appropriate measure to That's move great. that money. Thanks. And, and I'm going to talk about that a little more here because as we get near to your end, there will be appropriation changes. They'll still be within the context of the recovery plan, but basically if we, the city doesn't use all the money they have appropriated in a certain line item and it needs someplace else, then we're going to direct the city to pass an appropriation measure moving that. It's not an increase or a decrease to appropriations, it's just moving it around. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, the next thing I'm going to talk about um, are the three items that the city has listed in their recovery plan um, as possible um, expenditure reduction plans. One of them being the uh, 911 outsourcing. Um, I will defer that to the mayor um, to talk about in, when it gets to his, his section. Um, the biggest things I can tell you about um, are the health insurance and the retirees health care. Health insurance here in the next month, uh, the city should be getting information from their broker as to what rates are going to be and then we will look at the context of the recovery plan in accordance with that information and then help the city uh, make any necessary changes if so needed. 
Uh, we still, to date, uh, like we indicated, that's going to be October, November. Uh, retirees health care um, is an area of concern, and I will tell you that the city auditor and the mayor are in the process of uh, reviewing that and having some discussions. Um, but nothing has uh, transpired officially yet, but they are actively reviewing that. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is the informational requests. Um, I had a, uh, Melissa had sent me a, um, a request to talk about the stormwater management. And so you have two additional sheets. You have a little narrative write up, and then you also have an ordinance. We had talked about this fund as far as, I believe it was in 2015, where the city um, did not receive assessment monies once they parted ways with Hamilton County um, overseeing this. And I had indicated to the commission that you could not go back and recollect those monies, and that is true, but what you can do is assess a second time. So the city typically only assesses once a year, and that formula is based on a formula provided by the county. But they've notified the county that in 2018 they want to assess property owners two times, basically in an effort to recoup those lost revenues from 15. So if you look, I'm not going to go through all everything that's on here, but this informational, but you'll see the amount of money that um, Hamilton County collected. It's, it's you know, a rough estimate. Um, it was the city's belief that they were not getting, um, they were just passing those dollars on to the county and the county filling out the paperwork and actually not making repairs or or anything to the infrastructure within the stormwater um, area here in the city. So that's the decision that council made, city made, to bring that back in-house. Um, it only cost the city twelve to $13,000 a year for um, the firm that fills out the paperwork and makes sure that all the EPA paperwork is filled out correctly and then that leaves a balance for them to use and um, either maintain or, or add on to their current infrastructure system. Um, this information I did get from Mr. Gears, Safety Service Director, and I don't have a list of projects, but his estimates there's probably been 10 to 15 stormwater projects since the city took this back in-house. And I also provided you the ordinance um, in case you had questions of, of when they left. The amount they've shown here, $85,000, uh, is that what the second assessment is meant to cover, or is it going to go after eight hundred? No, 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 no. This is just saying that this the Hamilton County, um, when they were collecting, they were getting roughly, eight, the county was taking in about $85,000 a year, and that was over like, a, and that was a year, and they did that for like 10 years. So then if you take that and you look, it only costs the city twelve to $13,000 a year to fill out the paperwork. The city's question is, what happened to the rest of that money? Well, they did not feel it was used for the benefit of the city of Norwood, and that's why they pulled it back in. So, no, the assessment only brings in, I believe, around sixty, seventy thousand a year. So, by doing a second assessment, that they'll that'll cover that amount. They'll get an additional it, sixty or seventy. Hard. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But that's just for two thousand and eighteen, because typically they only assess once a year. Right. So this is, I guess, for discussion, or this is going to happen, was, or it's already happened. Yeah. Okay. Someone had asked a question as to, you know, how this transpired, why the city made the decision to pull out from the county, and so that's what this. Yeah. Is. And now the city, the taxpayers are going to pay for the mistake that was made in 2015. Sounds like that would be correct. And so the twelve to thirteen thousand—that's um, who they're paying now to do the paperwork. Correct. Okay. And who is that? I believe it is JMA Consultants. Is that? But some of the responsibility also lies with the the city. They're doing absolutely. some of the work that the absolutely. county did. Yes, absolutely. Okay. But JMA Consultants—they take care of all the pa paperwork to make sure that the city is in compliance with those EPA mandates. And then they also have another company they work with as far as if if they need some projects done that they can't do in house, okay. just like you would with any other type of construction. What department or who or what office runs the stormwater management? That would be under Public Works. Hamilton County. 
Um, I was just questioning this because um, I know for a fact that the majority of the local government entities in the state of Ohio, um, or I mean, in, I'm sorry, not the state of Ohio, in Hamilton County use um, Hamilton County to, to do this, to provide this service. So I was just, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that they didn't do, a, you know, a sufficient job in that everybody, you know, the majority is using them. Um, I don't know who all uses them, Marcy. Um, I would say most of your smaller entities do. If you have like vill villages, typically uh, those folks don't have the expertise or the staffing usually. So I don't know what the ratio is between villages and cities that use um, the county versus. And well, and I actually talked to the to the uh, county, and they said that they've only had a handful that have opted out. Actually, oh. Just, just wondering. I can tell you this: we opted out because we was money was going down there and nothing was coming back. And so, under the MSD thing, we we, we had stuck with stormwater, and that's an old story that's been going along. So we had no funds coming in to help repair our stormwater problems. And the decision was made because the money was going down and nothing was coming back. The very few dollars that we sent down were spent in Norwood. So Mr. Gears and talking to JMA, you know, the other people were opting out to do the same thing. It's as simple as that. We were sending money back and we were getting nothing in return. Do we know why that is? I, no, I don't know. We didn't have any control over it. We didn't, we didn't ask the question? I don't know whether we asked the question or not, but we, we, had, we had nothing to say. We, well, why are we not getting services for Norwood would be the question. Wouldn't it? If you're paying money, you expect services? Yes, yes. And, and they said so they would spend question. the money where they want to spend the money. And we decided that it was best for our taxpayers that if the money came back, it came back to us. We're sending money down. We're not getting anything back. So we decided that we'd come back and we would keep it and we would spend the money on our projects. A lot of people don't have the old stormwater systems that we have. So we needed those funds to take care of that. We've done two projects. There's two projects up off of Mountain View where storm sewers collapsed twice running through people's yards, and we had to go in and repair that. It was above what in-house could handle. So we used those funds to pay that, to take care of that. That's what that's the whole intent of it. And council agreed, and they passed it. How much, um, just give me an idea of how much did you expect to get back or that you've heard from others that get money back? So we, we, we expected to get whatever was sent down. All of the assessment, all of the assessment comes right to the city of Norwood and it comes on the tax settlement sheets for what's assessed on the residents of the city of Norwood, just the, sa the same as property taxes. Okay. So whatever it, they, whatever the formula computes to, and I can't speak to that formula, but that, whatever it's computed, it, that's all comes back to the city of Norwood. Okay. So now that they've pulled out of him, nothing goes to Hamilton. County. Right, right. I understand. Yeah. Okay. And it comes uh, back on the settlement sheet. This company, JMA, is it that did work for us? Uh, what is their liability for not getting this money or this money just not being sent to us? Uh, they have no liability as far as that. That. But money. don't we pay them to to be our compliance expert? Well, and what happened to is yes. Take care happened, of that and make sure the money comes. Right, but they they get paid, and so whether or not the money's in the fund, they had to get paid. So I can't speak but, to where this. But is isn't their paid. job to handle this and make sure we get the they money? They don't handle the money. They only handle. Okay, so they did the paperwork, and the money do, was our responsibility. That's correct. Administer. They only administer the paperwork end of it, as far as filing what needs to be filed with the EPA. As far as the revenue side, that's on the city. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's just disappointing because we pay somebody to do, to do what's expected and then this falls through the cracks and we lose money and now the, but there, the taxpayers are going to have to pay for that because well, of it, basically someone not doing their job. Well, that would be on the city. That's not on the consultant. Right, right. Yeah, that's they're correct. only on, they're just doing yeah, what I mean, they're they, contracted they, yeah, to do. Yeah, and I'm sure they have that in their contract to not do that, but it's disappointing that now the because a mistake was made, it, there's a financial impact and that's being paid by the taxpayers. But let me just understand this. But then, the uh, the when the county was in charge, they were not just responsible for the paperwork; they were also responsible for you said making repairs and in infrastructure, right? That so that was a correct. different arrangement. Correct. Okay. 
Uh, the other informational request um, was about the actuarial study. And at that time, I think I, I indicated that there had been talks, uh, the city had talked. So they have, they have talked to uh, the firm that does the actuarial study. And we did check um, with Mr. Patterson in the city auditor's office this morning and also Mr. Gears. Uh, there seemed to have been a delay, um, not on the city's part, but on different parties part um i don't want to say that the healthcare provider sending information to the firm that's doing the actuarial study didn't think they had received the information and we did see an email where that information had been provided to them in june um, so mr patterson and mr gears are both reaching out to see what they can do as far as speeding that process up so the health care provider did send them? yes yes okay sorry who's who's who does the actuarial study it's Cooney, Ruskin. Just some strike yeah. firm that does that kind of thing. Yeah, yes. Third party. They're a good yeah, firm. They do a lot of work. Is that the accounting nature. firm? Cooney Faulkner? That used to be Cooney. No, it's, no. Um, it, they do a lot of pension stuff. They do specialty yeah. studies they're, like that. They're the same firm that's done that report years prior to it ceasing here. Great. They've done and it. And so that's in the works. That's in the works. Ish. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so item D is the overview of the 2018 budget developments. Uh, as we talked about the last time we were here, we were going to have department meetings. Uh, those have occurred. We've had two, day, two full days of department meetings since our last commission meeting. Uh, we talked and went over the uh, how the budgets were supposed to be done and, and uh, making the uh, departments accountable and more informed uh, and then providing us information on uh, needs and wants, uh, and then uh, that information was sent to uh, us, and we're looking at those and reviewing those, and we're setting up a time with the city auditor's office so we can sit down and start putting together a 2018 appropriations and looking to see where we are with that versus the recovery plan. Uh, so those were very informative and very good, I thought, um, in, in moving forward. The other things that we have found out uh, also since our last commission meeting, uh, we do have a couple other liabilities that have been uh, um, sent to us, and that's on delinquent properties uh, that the city owns. And then also there were two pending lawsuits that have been settled, and so there will be uh, settled claims that will have to be paid out by the city as well. And we're working on those uh, with the city auditor and the legal department. And the legal department is also the one we're working with on the delinquent properties. Will that require a change within the financial plan? We'll know that later. Um, right now, we think as far as the settlement of claims, um, once we get, we're waiting on the final property tax settlement um, to be posted so we can see what those fees are, and there'll be some money left in those appropriation line items to move around. So we're trying to, to find money within the appropriations that we know aren't going to have anything the rest of the year to move it and, and not require change in the recovery plan. And this was for the property taxes on the um, uh, properties that the city acquired and we filed for an exemption. And right. So those ordinances were on the agenda and I informed them that we could not pass right. those because right. there was no right. appropriations. There's no appropriations, you are correct, Ms. Lake. Good job. <laughs> it wasn't very popular. No. But, no. <laughs> but ideally what we That's would like to do order. is work with the city to, to find, you know, and it's probably going to come down to sometime in November and we really know how we're going to end the year. We'll have, a, you know, because by then everything should be in and we should just be looking mainly at payroll for that purpose. But to find monies within the current recovery plan to pay all of that because those properties that the city now acquires, they cannot... They can't file for exemption status until the back taxes are paid. So, and that was um, something I, I believe they were not aware of when those properties were turned over to the city. And I, as my, as my understanding also is that um, the law director, in terms of paying those back taxes, has um, negotiated. Ten thousand dollars a year for over the year, so it wasn't all going to be at one time. Um, but it still was not within the recovery. I think that's on two two, two parcels. Yes, on two of the parcels. Yes. yes. On the um, budget development, the um, 
department meeting sound hopeful. What about the revenue side? Is there any information? Uh, I have been provided that with the city auditor. We're also going to be sitting down and talking about that as well before anything is brought to the table. Uh, so uh, they've provided that for the recovery plan to us, and uh, we're, we're going to be sitting down and talk about both. Great. Anything else for the financial supervisors? Thank you so much for all you're doing. Uh, I'd like to turn to a report of the mayor at this time. Any updates you'd like to share with the commission? Well, the, uh, the, the last commission we was talking about new businesses coming in and I couldn't say anything and it, and it showed up in the business courier and the inquiry wouldn't cover it because it's a deal with the business courier covers it, the inquiry won't. If the inquiry covers it, the business courier won't. But it was the announcement of PayCorps that they're going to invest $70 million in, in their project right up here on uh, Sanker Boulevard with another 1,200 people coming in. So that would probably bring that up there to about 2,500 people working in the city. So that's an additional 1,000 people coming in and a $70 million investment along with Terex. But the one issue I want to raise on this is, is very simply this. I would like to see the consideration of, from the very beginning, from the very beginning, whether it be building permits for Terex or, or, um, or, or PACOR or anybody else in, in that new development, <clears throat> that those funds, and I had a brief conversation with April about this. Now, this may not be too popular. But I would like to see those funds from those two projects locked up, put into a fund, and whether it's legal or not, that they cannot be used for anything until a $4 million reserve fund is established. Once that's established, then it would take a, you know, take a majority, super majority of council to spend that money. If those funds come in, they will go out and there won't be anything to show for it. At one time, we had a three and a half million dollar reserve fund, and it went. And I believe, in my opinion, down the road, after I'm gone, we have to have a reserve. And it has to be put in a position where the majority of council would be under the control of council, and the majority of council would have to vote to touch that money or stop that, that money from going into that fund. We have had new businesses come in. We have, but in my opinion, just one man's opinion, we have to have a reserve fund. And until we get that and get it locked down where it can't be used, uh, the money will just get spent. Long after you're gone, long after this new council comes in, no matter what anybody says, I don't care what anybody says, there will be requests and the money will go. For example, They'll say, okay, we need to do streets. The money that comes in will not cover those streets. Everybody knows, or they should know, that down the road, the only way these streets are going to get done is with a tax levy. And you can't go to the people and ask for a tax levy till you get that house in order and get that reserve fund built up. That's just my opinion. And so I, I've had a preliminary conversation with, with April about it, you know, what the law is, what the requirements are. Uh, for example, we had funds come in from a bond adjustment for a TIF or Cornerstone. I forget the amount, it was two or $300,000 and, and right away somebody wanted to spend it. They wanted a certain little project done. And we had to sign it and I said I would not sign it unless it went into a special fund that only council with a supermajority could spend. It lasted for a long time. We've, I finally, you know, under the repeal of the auditor's office and a few other people, we had to use it to pay the electric bill or we'd had no electric. So we strung that out as long as we could for just that one fund. I feel the same thing now. We're, you know, we're, we're I think we're doing our job and, and I think we're, we're businesses are coming in and more will come in. But I'm just one of those ones that believe there should be a reserve fund. And that's just, you know, that's my thought for now. And we'll see where it goes down the road, uh, how it's done legally and how the ordinance is structured and, and whether members of council want to do it. That's up to them. They have the full authority to do it. It's just, I personally believe 
that it's it's a it's a process. The discussions on this process should begin, and it I don't know whether it can be part of the the, uh, the plan or what it is, but it's just. I believe that it's a discussion that should be done now because what's going to happen is this is a political season and we can't ignore that. Everybody will say we need to do streets, and obviously we should. Okay, where are you going to get the money? When you tell people, well, we're going to do the streets and we can spend $500,000 to do these streets over a year, you're looking at fifteen to $20 million minimum if you want to do it right. So. If we're going to start this recovery process and this plan, I think the, the foundation should be a reserve plan uh, to put the funds away, to save them, and then legitimately coming out and telling the people the truth on, on, on what we'll take to do these streets. That's just my thought. Sorry, Mayor. For what would the funds be reserved? They would you, you would just have a reserve fund uh, what that, that could be spent at under what condition under an emergency such as it would take council six votes a super majority to Got do it. it that way so designed just like the one you right just the one we had so we could limit yeah what it's used for because what happens is whether it be residents people that work for the city where everybody's got their little pet peeve on what they think money should be spent for. Got it. And so the pressure will be put on those new council members now and new council members coming in that it would take a super majority to, to use those funds. Great, thanks. And that's that's the whole intent. Because we had three and a half billion dollars at one time and it went because people thought, you know, we had plenty of money. And they spent it. So that's just a thought. And if um, Hopefully that if it can be done legally and, and council members can uh, that are running or incumbents can, can look at it and export and have the discussion about it. That's all. That can be kept in mind for the next financial plan. As far as that, there are provisions within the Higher Rights Code to set up a reserve, but we've got to get the general fund positive first. Where did the four million come from? Was that the amount of money that you they, expect to get over a certain time from those new projects, or is that a percentage of something? Or no, that's when the economy was good. It was prior to two thousand and eight, and and the money was coming in, and they and they made a reserve fund. Plus, there was a, a, a tax thing for the TIF over there at Cornerstone, where it was refinanced and an extra money come in, and so you know the the economy was moving and the money was coming in. And then there was a reserve fund, and the bottom fell out, and that's that's. So you're trying to kind of replace the what, what existed that, before. That's exactly right, and yeah. I and I think just personally now I think, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I believe that information is being put out falsely that this budget that we have now have can co uh, cover a massive street program. It can't. And so, realistically, the taxpayers are going to have to pay for that, and it'll take us an additional tax. But with that said, you can't, I don't feel like, I wouldn't vote for it. You can't go to the taxpayers and say, we want you to do this tax levy to pay for the streets. Once you get your act in order, you, you improve your re, uh, income, reduce your operating cost, and you've got a reserve fund and show that responsibility, then I think at that point you go to the taxpayer and say, this is what we want, and we think you should do that because we've got our record here, we've got our house in order, so now we've, we're entitled to ask you for that. And, and bad information has been put out, Joe Gears will tell you that in street surveys, and he knows exactly what it takes you know, what level of street do you want to have? Do you want to do down to the water line? Do you want curbs? Do you want everything? So it, the cost varies. So I'm saying that I'm looking down the road long after I'm gone. So you're thinking three, four years, something yeah. like that. Yeah, that's yeah. the idea. Long Five after years. I'm gone, if we build that fund up, and then we have to go back to the public and say we need that. And whoever goes back to the public can say, 
this is what we've done to show good faith. The city's doing right what they should do. Then ask them for it. That, that's all I'm saying. In other words, makes sense. It. Yeah, makes sense. And I mean, companies are, you know, I mean, they say the individual keep three months of operating expenses in a safe place somewhere. So if you lose your job or things go bad, then you're not destitute. I, I learned that the hard way. My wife manages savings home for 30 years. So uh, I'm not, I've learned, I've been told. That, and, and, and it's when it's worked out well, you save, you save, you save, you save. And then you prepare yourself for that emergency. Yeah. And that's what I think we should, you know, at least for the option to have the conversation about it. And you can invest a chunk of money like that and get a pretty good return on it while it's sitting there. You, you could, I, and I know there's regulations on, on, on how uh, we don't want to turn in that California place, but there's certain regulations, you know, that, that are safe, that the taxpayer's money is not wasted in some, and the market crashes and their money's gone. So I, I think. It's just a way to look at something different, and it's a way to explore it down the road. But I think we should start, I believe we should start that now. Very good. Council President, do you have a... Um, as I indicated before, there were two ordinances on the agenda to pay those back property taxes that I advised. Um, we're not in the recovery plan, so they were removed from the agenda and referred to Finance Committee um, for consideration and um, whether we needed, whether or not we needed to amend the financial recovery plan. And I suggested if we did need to do that, that we might want to make a list of everything that needed to be um, amended in the financial recovery plan so it only is done once. But perhaps we can do that within the confines of the um, of the current plan and move things around um, the other thing that I want to mention is that we have set dates for public hearings for the application for the community development block grant funds um, it's a three-year funding cycle that the federal government sends to Hamilton County they administer this program and it's for some very specific things in the past we have used those funds for street resurfacing um, the Norwood helped up the dental program uh, and the school dental health program, um, streetscapes, um, playgrounds. I'm missing something. Five things we've used in the past. Um, anyway, we will be holding public hearings at both of the council meetings in October. Um, don't have those dates right in front of me, um, but they are the second and fourth. So it'll be October the 10th and October the 24th. Those dates will be published. We'll just be hearing from the public of um, how the public might want those. Oh, the third one is playgrounds. The fifth one is playgrounds. Um, so we will be hearing from the public as to how they might want those funds to um, to be requested. And then eventually at the end of this year or early in 2018, we will make the official application to Hamilton County. So just to let you know that um, streets are always included. We try to get those every year and those usually are what we use for matching funds when we do get grants. And the final thing is at the last meeting, we did pass a resolution accepting the um, amounts and rates of um, determined by the Budget Commission for the tax levies and certifying the amounts that we will get. And so I do have the um, that was passed unanimously by the six people in attendance and so there is an estimate of what our property taxes will be next year oh good is, is that online um, you can have this if you want well, I'm just curious if um, looks like um, inside millage is uh, 1,259,000 outside millage is 1,409,641 so um, gross levy proceeds 2,668,661 okay thank you you're very welcome um, th that's probably in the clerk of council's office. Uh, the mayor has to sign it and then um, it gets certified. So it may be in the mayor's office or the clerk of council's office, but there should be a certified copy of that is online at the clerk of council's website. Great. Once those get passed, those ordinances are posted online. Great. Okay. Um, we have scheduled already our um, next meeting date to be November 13th. I'm trusting that's still a good date. Um, we'll take a 
uh, pulse at that point to see if there is a need for a December meeting or not. We're going to, the financial supervisors are going to be working really hard to that point and then we'll, uh, we'll determine at that point if we're going to schedule anything for December. So uh, we've got our next meeting. Good night. It isn't, would it be, uh, if we're in the final stages for the budget for next year, would a, would a commission meeting in December be helpful or not mean really that much? Uh, we'll take a look at what the um, estimated revenues and appropriations are and if they're in line with the recovery plan as it is, then the commission could forego the December meeting. Um, if not, then yes, I would advise another meeting. Because it, I, meetings are fine, but if you're going to just meet to be meeting, it's a waste of time. But uh, but, I, I, but I'm, I'm getting at it. so the appropriations for the 2018 uh, revenue and appropriations would dictate whether. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. And hopefully by the November meeting, we'll also have some feedback on the health care mm -hmm. you know, rates and such. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I had a couple follow-up questions for the mayor or council. Uh, Do I, am I permitted they, to ask? Did they pertain to our... Their previous agenda items that were discussed? Um... I can put them on the next one, but yeah. they were. We talked about. Um, I think I want to get an update on the departmental budgets, the comp time assessments, um, and talk a little bit more about healthcare. I think I'd prefer to follow them up next time if we could. We okay. kind of covered a number of those. Health right. I had some follow-up questions because some of those were touched on, some of those those weren't. Okay. Um, so. But you can go ahead. I'm not certain we're going to have any answers today. But that's fine. Well, I just a couple right, things I, I I thought that, that could be updated okay. for the group. All right. Um, Sorry. What is what were the three? So I make sure that I. Well, uh, I know that there was discussion of the departments doing budgets Department for budgets. the first time. So I wanted to get an update on sure. on oh, on that and how that's coming and where that stands. Oh. Also, there was uh, the mayor brought up uh, either the last meeting or a couple meetings ago that there we were looking at the amount of comp time and um, and I guess I wanted to get an update on that. And then on the health care, I, I wanted to suggest uh, before we get too deep into the renewal that council or mayor or whoever in charge it, it, it takes a serious look at the amount of premiums the city pays. Um, as well as the deductibles, the coverages and things. And looking at these plans, and I have a lot of experience, and I've already spoken to the group about this, virtually no one in this world gets 100% of their health care paid, and the plan doesn't look as rosy as uh, any of the other plans that are out there in private industry or other not-for-profits as far as, you know, I mean, the deductibles will. Mine is, I think my out-of-pocket is... Sixteen thousand dollars for my family and sixty-five hundred for me, and I think the out-of-pockets in there were like seven hundred and fifty dollars or fifteen hundred dollars. Which, if you add in them paying, you know, portion of the premiums, and have the coverage not be as as wonderful as it is, I think there's hundreds of thousands of dollars of savings that can be uh, garnered in the fall if those items were addressed and that would even make the plan, the plan would still be uh, rosy and very beneficial to the employees beyond other employed people relatively and uh, you'd save hundreds of thousands of dollars in the process. I think the city is taking a look at that kind of thing and that's where on their 18 financial plan that there can be a consideration made to, to that kind of a structural change. We have our assumptions in place for the 17 plan so I, I share your hope that there are other considerations being made. So, but I think we need to wait out and the next meeting we'll have a better understanding of where this is going to land in reality for the upcoming rates. Can I at least respond to his statement? Yeah, that's okay. right. You know what? You, you, you're right. We made ground in part of the health care insurance. We, we went so, we, we made a big improvement. I, I've said this before, to get by arbitrators. So we've made that improvement. Now we've got contracts, okay? 
And so we will move forward again. It will get addressed. He just can't, we, we made a, a major, major improvement in the last agreement. Now is the next step. And that's when we, we have to make more uh, improvement in that area. So it is moving along, but we still have contracts. And while those contracts are in effect, we're stuck. So these contracts say we have to pay 100% and provide a plan. We've got, this, we've got contracts this suite. That, that dictate that. What we it, did is specifically that they dictate specifically it, it, it that. It says it says in the contract what the deductibles are, and like I've tried to explain before, the last contracts they had the specific plan in there. Joe Gears and, and Kelly Babcock got that out. It What's a specific for, plan? Can, it, you know. it, it gave the specific. Uh, plan what what would be covered it'd been in there for years and they got that out meaning they weren't covering certain things that were covered before no no it was a specific company. It, it, it gave a specific company and a plan that you had to say with that company right oh, okay so you and were so allowed to, to switch with that companies company right. that plan so, okay. that they we, only wrote for we, we got well, that, that nice. out of there finally because like I said you, you have to go to arbitration when you reduce things you, you know you go to mediation and then to go to arbitration and our advisors told us, you can make progress, and an arbitrator will may support you. If you go too far, if an arbitrator feels like you've gone too far, you're getting too much, they won't back you. And so this is their experience that's telling us which direction to go, at which time we take it to council, and we kept council in, informed on every bit of negotiation <coughs> and, and left the decision up to council and explain that to them, what the options were. It wasn't an arbitrary thing that we did on our own. So we had the legal advisors and we took it to council. So we made a lot of progress. The city made a lot of progress in that area. Now we have to continue on. It's, you can't cut everything in one contract. Well, let me ask. Over a period of time. Let me just interject quickly. The, the change that was made before was switching healthcare companies. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why uh, the groups that are being covered care what company you're with because it's all about the coverage and the deductibles. If I'm with Humana or I'm with Mass Mutual, I really don't care if everything else is the same. So that was totally saving that amount of money by switching. This is driving, driving change and, and, and for them to not expect employees to pay anything and to have a deal that is so sweet that everybody in this room would agree is the sweetest deal I've ever seen. Uh, is it, it, ridiculous if an arbitrator says you can't negotiate that. That that is just I just will not believe that. You know what? You keep hammering on the same thing over and over again. Well, because I'm not getting good answers. But, but, but well, I you're getting good. You're you're something getting something good results. To be honest with you, whether you like the answers or not, it doesn't make any difference to me. Well, we're, clearly, we're, we're, we're clearly going, it doesn't. We're, we're, it doesn't. Well, but we are going for results. Heard this. And this is part of the financial plan, and it's being reviewed. We have it on here, and we, we had the uh, update today on the um, current employee health insurance costs. So we'll continue to come to this topic, and I know that the, there are points of view on this, and we can't resolve them right now, and perhaps can be discussed. Um, it can be something that the city will continue to work on. So, Because yeah, what, what I've heard to date, I have not heard speaking to deductibles and percentages and things like that, at least not specific details. What I've heard is that we're waiting to see what type of suggested increase we may have for next year and that, that we're going to put that in the budget. I haven't heard yeah. anything beyond that as far as change and making the employees pay more of their well, share. I see it as under this review I mean, of current health care insurance costs. Go ahead, April, you want to say I think there's a disconnect um, from what you deal with in private sector versus what government deals with. So I'm just going to do a quick little thing, and then I will provide some information to Melissa to give. But let's let's talk about the two, uh, the biggest departments. Let's say I'm fire, Anna Mary's police. Ms. Longnecker is not covered by a union agreement. My union contract spells out what I get and don't get. So is it fair that Ms. Longnecker has to pay more for her health insurance, that she has to pay 20% of the premium when I'm covered by a bargaining unit and I don't? And I think that's kind of, you know, that's something the city has. Is it, is it fair to penalize other employees within the city 
when the same is not being spread. So when Mr. S William says that, you know, it's they've gone after things. Okay, they have gone after things within the bargaining unit. They're, they're obligated to what is in place in those contracts right now. So come the end of the year, they're in the middle of contracts. They can't change what they're providing and the coverage to those, un for those employees covered by those union contracts. But could they look at that they're moving forward? Absolutely. Your point is well taken, and I do know from talking to Mr. Williams myself, that is something they're going to be looking at moving down the road. But you, they can The city is held to what's in those contracts at this time. Right, and, it, and if I'm an employee that is not uh, having the benefit of a contract, uh, I'm sorry, but you're not a police, you're not a fire, so you have a contract and these other people don't. doesn't mean these people can't pay more of the share, uh, even though the police and fire can't, well, until the next contract. There are three union agreements. Hey, what? There are three unions here. There's not just I'm just using Okay, well, she named police and fire. I just was using that. I'm just letting you know there's no. Right, I'm just saying that's, that, to me, I find that is kind of a lame excuse that, oh, we can't do it because there's this one deal here that we, I don't know if we negotiated well or not. That's still in question, but you have all these other people over here that are getting a free ride. And still, the plan is super sweet, and they're not paying anything. So that's my point is, I mean, there's savings there, and if, and if you can't see that, I... I Lame excuse, you know, is, is a ridiculous statement. The fact of the matter is, okay. people, people that are not a member of the union, by ordinance, are, are, are given what's equated to 3278. 3278 is the clerk's union. The point of people are associated, their benefits are tied to that 3278 union. That's true. Okay, so there's so, another contract for them. No, no, there's an ordinance. There's no ordinance. Okay. See, see, it would help, it would really help if you would just take the time to inform yourself of what's going on. Well, instead, I, I have instead, like a full-time job, just like you do. Your job is to do this. Yeah. I also have a full-time job and three kids and a okay. family. So I, I, you don't need to question me doing my homework. I, when I sit here and have these discussions with you, I question the level of, an, of knowledge that you have. And you may know how the game's played, but the game is clearly a, a corrupt game. And okay. it's not the well, way 90% of isn't. the world works. So okay. uh, that's what you need to understand. What, what is right. corrupt? What do you mean by corrupt? No, okay, we no, need no, to stop. Okay, we just need to I stop. I won't stand right. for it. We're done. Okay. Yeah, that's, we need to, uh, and I appreciate your questions. And to the degree you have some for the November meeting as well, please get those to me. We're more than happy to have them incorporated within the sure. agenda so we can have fuller responses and, and provide more information. Thank you. Uh, so we're always happy to do that. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything else for the good of the order? We have a motion to adjourn. I move. Shepherd, second. Second. Longnecker, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No? Okay. We're adjourned. Thank you Thank very you. much.